여러분 안녕하세요. 미래 돈을 만나보겠습니다. 퓨처머니, 오늘은요. 최근 급부상하고 있는 이더리움 레이어2 개발사인 타이코 랩스를 한번 만나보겠습니다. 자, 바로 만나볼게요. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 네, 네이호. 네이호. Firstly, when did you came here in Korea? Uh, I came on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, it's been... It's been uh, three days. Yes. Uh, it's been three days. It's been three days. Isn't it tired of doing something every single event around the Seoul? Uh, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things are happening. Yeah. I, I love the city of Seoul. Yes. Uh, we can recognize every single event venue just because of the color of pink. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We are the only pink company in the crypto world. Yes. That's great. Yeah. I just want to hear about. Uh, you are the CEO and co-founder of Tyco, uh, Mr. Terence. Yes. Yes. Could you please give us a brief introduction mm -hmm. uh, of yourself and Tyco to the camera? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I'm Terence. I'm the co-founder and COO yeah. of Tyco. Um, so basically, what it means is uh, ecosystem, community, partnerships, yeah. finances, go to market. You know, they they are all my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Every people, every single investor mm -hmm. is curious about uh, the Taika mm -hmm. just because it's been recently boomed up. Yes. In in since it started in the beginning of 2024. Mm -hmm. What happened to the Taika? What happened to Taika? <laughs> Thank you. Very interesting. Yes. Um, so so we are first of all we are very excited yeah. uh, about you know what we are doing. Yeah. Uh, Taiko, uh Maybe I should give a very brief introduction of what Taiko is. Sure. About. Uh, because I met a lot of you know Korean industry players, and I realized that you mm. know not many people know what Taiko is yeah. doing. Taiko is a fully open source, uh, permissionless, and decentralized Ethereum scaling solution. Um, our goal, our objective, is actually to scale Ethereum by a thousand times mm. and making it a lot cheaper to use, uh, so we can bring the next billion users onto the blockchain you know ecosystem. Mm. That's what we're trying to do, yes. You guys are based on Hong Kong, right? Uh, actually, I'm the only person in Taiko that's in Hong Kong. Uh, Taiko has a team of 38 people. Ooh. We call it the, the, most, the smallest, most efficient infrastructure team yeah. in the space. Um, uh, but then we are very global. We built Taiko in order to cater for the global community. Yeah. So our team is all over the world. You know, we speak all languages, we work in all time zones, we are supporting all developer communities all around the world. That's one of the secrets of Taiko. Okay, okay, very good to hear that. Yes. Then before we get started, an in-depth question. I just want to ask you about the beginning of Taiko mm -hmm. and concept of Taiko. Also, mm -hmm. what makes Taiko so different from the other chains in sure. general? So, so you know, um, our co-founder team yeah. uh, has started the journey of building on, uh, in, uh, on Ethereum uh, since before 2017. Uh, in the last cycle, we all believe in the promise of a programmable blockchain mm -hmm. by Ethereum. We believe that uh, blockchain is the next internet. You know, uh, but then in the last cycle, we realized Ethereum is so expensive to use. You know, it's impossible for gas fees and gas fees, congestion, yeah. number of transactions. So uh, since then, you know, uh, our team has always wanted to to help Ethereum to become the next big thing, the big, next big Internet. Yeah. So that's where the co-founder team actually come together and said what we can do. And we come across the zero knowledge proof technology, yeah. CK proof. And, and we believe that the timing is right. You know, and, and this is what we, we, we can do together. So we created Taiko. Um, another thing what we, uh, we also notice about is when you scale Ethereum, you know, Ethereum is so successful, so strong because they are permissionless, they are decentralized, and they are also uh, very secure. The security is very good. Uh, when you scale Ethereum, if you give up any of these important attributes, mm -hmm. then then it doesn't matter how fast Ethereum is. It doesn't matter how cheap Ethereum is. And we realized that there are so many other projects uh, in the space that's with the same goal to try to scale Ethereum. But we look at their solution and all of them are all becoming centralized when they scale Ethereum. You know, and they, they, so we, we think that 
scaling of Ethereum need to be done in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, uh, the two things that we pay very, a lot of attention to. One is when we scale Ethereum, we have to maintain all the core essence at value. The reason why Ethereum is so successful, yeah. unchanged. And the second thing is uh, Ethereum is all about ecosystem community. So developer experiences, user experience is very important. Yeah. So, um, so when we build Tyco, uh, we also make sure that the developer experiences, you know, uh, 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 as close, as native, as similar as Ethereum as possible. So that's how we built Tyco. Actually, I just want to share about some of the difference, very yes. unique differences sure. from the other project. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so as I mentioned yeah. just now, that you know there are many many projects that with a goal to scale Ethereum, and we're very happy that so many people are trying to make Ethereum so much faster higher capacity, cheaper to use, right? Uh, but then, you know, um, when they do it, we realize that they are compromising on two very important things. One of them is when, when we want a very successful infrastructure, yeah. um, networking effect is very important. You know, when, we go, when I go to business school, right? Networking effects is very important. You know, the more user, the more developer, the more developer, the more users. Uh, it's not just about, you know, uh, a, a network. It's about, you know, it's like about a, 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 what they call a flywheel, you know. People comes to a network when there's a lot of things to use. Uh, and people, developer only want to deploy onto an infrastructure when it's easy and they have a peace of mind that they, 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 they're secure, it's easy to deploy. Yeah. So um, Tyco is the only Ethereum equivalent layer two solution. Uh, Vitalik has an article the, the very nice article to say there are actually four different types of Ethereum scaling solution. They call him, he called him type one to type four. You know, we are the only type one uh, Ethereum equivalent scaling solution. What it means, mm -hmm. you can literally copy and paste any DApp on like Ethereum and just do a simple RPC configuration and deploy in Tyco. In the same language, right? Same language. You don't need to change a single line of code. You just copy the whole DApp do a small RPC reconfiguration, deploy on Tyco, and it will work like a magic. It will, it will just be faster, cheaper to use, uh, no change. And because you didn't change any line of code, we inherit Ethereum security. There's no, no new security you know, assumptions. You don't need to learn new toolkits. You know, unlike other, other layer twos, when you want to use them, you actually have to learn new languages. You need to recompile your apps. You have to change the codes. And then a lot of things would go wrong when you do that. You know, in, in Tyco's case, we are the only type one that actually allows developer to copy and paste an Ethereum app and launch, run on Tyco and just like that. We want to lower the entry barrier yeah. and the resistance of any developer considering, you know, deploying onto Tyco. Yeah. And uh, oh, I and I also want to mention. Uh, I, I did mention it slightly earlier. It's like um, we are actually also the only permissionless decentralized infrastructure in Layer Two. What it means is our proposers and our provers, people who build Tyco blocks, yeah. Layer Two blocks, and people who prove Tyco blocks, uh, with, like miners. They usually they call it miners, but yeah. they are actually workers, the provers and proposers in the Tyco architecture, protocol architecture, though they are, it's purely permissionless and decentralized. So, so anyone can, can build blocks for Tyco, propose blocks for Tyco. Anyone can help to prove blocks for Tyco. It works just like Ethereum miners. Uh, we are the only layer two actually has that kind of decentralized permissionless architecture. That actually is very important for security because you don't need to worry about Tyco people having a block and then we don't know what we're putting in because we are not the one that's putting in all the transaction. Yeah. It's all the community. Oh, just simple. It, yeah. it sounds like it's your, you, you and, and, and Tyco and Ethereum is in one, the same circle, right? We have the same ethos. We have the same belief yeah. that, you know, if we want everyone, every developer, every user to trust the network, trust the digital asset on chain, then we have to make sure, you know, that they don't, they, they, they have peace of mind and they don't need to worry about things. Okay. Yes. I don't want to ask you about 
more of Ethereum equivalent. I have to answer about, uh, ask you about the ZK rollup. Everyone knows ZK rollups. Uh, the word of ZK rollup mm -hmm. is very famous, mm -hmm. but 99% uh, of the people yes. uh, cannot understand yes. what the ZK and a rollup is. Yes. Can you explain what it is? Of course, I would love to. Yeah. So, so I, we, we mentioned that you know, the goal of the project is to scale Ethereum, right? So in the past, every single transaction is posted on Ethereum. So that's causing the, the congestion and also the slowness and also the, the high cost, right? So the way to scale Ethereum actually is what we call batch processing. So if I can put hundreds of transactions and thousands of transactions mm -hmm. together into the same block, mm -hmm. and, and, and instead of posting every single transaction on chain, then I use the Ethereum capacity in a lot more efficient way. However, how to do it in a very secure way then, then it comes to zero knowledge proof. Zero knowledge proof is actually a mathematical model yeah, right. that allow you to only post the, 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 the result of the zero knowledge proof calculation on Ethereum layer one without posting all the details of a hundred transactions, a thousand transactions onto Ethereum layer one. And you can, you can still be guaranteed by the zero knowledge proof calculation that all these hundreds of transactions within the same block mm -hmm. are accurate and cannot be modified. So, so instead of posting, you can imagine this is like, you know, in, instead of a thousand cars going through the highway, you put a, a, a few hundred cars, a thousand cars into one big truck, and then that one truck go through. And so all the thousand cars go through. But there's a zero knowledge proof is the mathematical way to prove that, you know, that this all the thousand transactions are accurate and non-changeable without needing to post all the exact transaction of all each one of them on chain. So that significantly reduces, you know, the, 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 the network usage by 99%. What about the fees? What about the expenses? Well, then the, basically, if you can bundle hundreds of transactions yeah. into one block, you're only proof, sending the, the proof onto Ethereum layer one, then you're only paying the fee for the proof. The proof is like, like a fraction of just a few percent of the size of the thousands of transactions. So it, the way Ethereum works is you pay for what is being posted onto the network. So if you're posting so much less data onto the chain, you're paying. So basically, you, you're paying for one transaction's cost. It already takes care of hundreds of transactions in the same block. Oh, really? So the fee is divided by how many transactions you can bundle into the same block. Yeah, that's why we use CK mathematical model to roll up hundreds and thousands of transactions into the same block and then post it onto Ethereum and then basically making the transaction fee a fraction of what you used to pay. Okay, mm. very rare characteristic because there are many, so many of ZK rollers already mm. Mm. in the market, in the right. industry. Uh, ZK Sinks and Polygons mm -hmm. also, uh, mm. I heard that already 43 companies and 43 mm. projects are yes. running ZK rollers stuff. Yes. Uh, but uh, how can we distinguish mm. the features of this, right. uh, the ZK rollers stuff, uh, from Tyco mm. to the others. Right. So, so I talk about being type one. Yeah. So compatibility is very yeah. important. The way that we do our CK rollup, uh, we ensure end-to-end -end compatibility with Ethereum. What it means is, you know, whatever we do under the hood on the protocol layer, it mm. doesn't affect the developer and the user. You know, so so the the number one differences from us to them is that you know as we continue to upgrade. Tyco into version two, version three, version four, it doesn't affect the developer or the user at all. You know, to them, it's still identical to Ethereum. Mm. Um, for other network, when they upgrade, then the developer might need to change their code every time in order to, to, to follow that. That's one. The second thing is that um, we have something called, we are the only based rollup. There's a new term in, in the Only industry. Based, and based which is a what's based on the cap, based right. rollup. What, what it means is actually we don't have a centralized sequencer. We don't sequence our own block. You know, our, our, our sequencing is based on Ethereum validators. Sorry, sequencing has to be explained <laughs> to okay. the viewers. <laughs> yes, sequencing basically is when you have a million blocks in, in Tyco, yeah. 
who decide which block goes first, which ah. block, which block goes second. Priority. So the sequence, yes, yeah. the priority of the sequence. So in a typical other layer twos, you know, the the project itself, they 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 decide who which block goes first, which yes, blocks right. goes second. Uh, it's a single point of failure. It's potentially a single point of failure, and you also need to you give a lot of power to that project yeah. to decide which transaction go first, which transaction go second. More gas fees. And well, gas fees depends. But yeah. then, you, you, in 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 the, in the blockchain world, you you don't want one single company to decide yeah. everything. You know, who who goes first, who get included, who doesn't get included. We are base roll up means that we actually gave up that right to sequence our yeah. layer two block to the Ethereum validators. And Ethereum is the most secure, most decentralized infrastructure. So we are the only base roll up where, where we, we, our ecosystem, our the proposals and provers infrastructure are very aligned with the Ethereum yeah. uh, validators. Okay. So that, that's, that's one thing that's uh, very different. Uh, the second thing that's very different is uh, we actually support what we call contestable rollup. Contestable rollup. Contestable rollup. So we have a we have a phrase called "we are based contestable rollup." So so we like people to un to remember some buzzwords. So they don't need to you know if they are interested they can go into very deep tech. Yeah. But if they want to be very easy to understand to remember it, so we 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 like to create na yeah. names like based contestable rollup is what we call ourselves. Yeah. So what contestable, as the word suggested, is yeah. is we support a multi-proof system. Multi-proof system. Multi-proof. So one proof is not enough, you know. And and we want to be able to allow the the infrastructure player to have multiple proof on the same block, and always use the most efficient proof. Mm. So the zk proving technology is still evolving, you know. There's zk EVM. There's zk VM. There's SGX proof and you know new things are constantly coming up. Yeah. So so we are the only uh, zk rollup that allows multiple proof to be used on our infrastructure. The, we are, the, so our 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 ecosystem can always choose the most efficient uh, proof uh, on our infrastructure. You know, and they also can use put multiple proof like two proof on the same block if they think that that's more safe. So we allow people to, to compete on which one is the most efficient proof, who can prove the block first. And if I need two proof or three proof for the same block, they can all configure it mm. in the infrastructure. So that's also another area, you know, if, if we start to go deeper, you know, what we built for Tyco to allow for better security, always be able to use the most cutting edge, most efficient proof and the most secure proof and multiple proof to make the network more efficient. I think it's a very helpful explanation to the viewers, which is because it was uh, originated from the developers, developers language Yes. The, from the beginning. Yeah. So yes. it's quite a easier than before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Now we are in the era of mm. Web3 actually. Mm. When we started the 2024, mm. the Bitcoin ETF have been yes. proved yes. and every single uh, projects are very boomed up mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. So what we Taiko create its own, you know, characteristic right. again and very unique mm. uh, specialty mm -hmm. in, in this ecosystem. Sure. So first of all, we are, we are very happy and we are very excited that we have a, one of the largest community in the whole blockchain world. Congratulations. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, our, our Discord members just exceeded a million, you know, uh, so we are, we have the largest Discord server yeah. in the whole crypto, crypto world. Um, and, um, and when, when we do that, you know, uh, a lot of people ask me, what does that 1 million people always do, you know, on, on, on our Discord server, right? We How come? Space. Yeah, right. How come? Like, <laughs> at any one time you go up, there's 50,000 people, you know, in our Discord talking, talking and talking. And that goes back to the, 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 the belief that we have. I think any successful blockchain project has to be built for community with the community. So all our community manager, they all started off as a, a volunteer moderator. You know, they are, they were not our team members. You know, they just believe in what we are trying to do 
they and then they volunteer. Mm. They help to moderate, you know, all the conversation, and then we gradually bring the good ones in in into our team and let them help us to run the community, the ecosystem. And by doing that, you know, actually our our community team is very very much, you know, they breathe the same air, they talk the same language, they. They, they, you know, they run the same kind of blood and believe with the community, and that networking effect brings more and more and more people together. Uh, the same way for developers, you know, um, that you know the, the developers and the proposers and the mind, because we 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 said we are fully decentralized, we're permissionless, and we let the community, you know, we build for the we build the technology for yeah. the community, but we let the community run our network, the developers to say what they want and decide where they want to focus on. So that actually helped us to fast track our whole ecosystem growth. And that has started the flywheel of our, our community. So now we haven't even made that launch yet. You know, we're, we're, right. we're still in testnet, yeah. but we have over a hundred dApps deployed onto our testnet. Our Discord community has exceeded a million people, which is never unheard of. Um, and, and, and every time we run a campaign with our developer, with, on our community, it, a lot of time it brings too many users to our partners. You know, the, like they bring you know, 50,000 DAUs to them and then they, really? they, they actually crash the servers. You know, our chain is fine, but our partner server has never seen so many simultaneous sim right? yeah. people. So they all feel that building on Tyco, you know, uh, they believe in our technology. They don't need to worry about security because we are we inherit Ethereum security. They don't need to learn new languages. You know, they whatever they've been doing on Ethereum works on us. And every time they engage with our community, they always grow super fast. They get very good response. They get to test out their functionality and everything. So that's very re rewarding. I think that's a very healthy uh, ecosystem. ecosystem. Right. Yes. Can you guess how many developers are engaged in your ecosystem? Um, <laughs> we have a very strong partnership team. Yeah. In addition to the community team, we also have a very strong partnership team. They are again all over the world. Yeah. The leader is actually in, in, in Spain. And then we have, we have team members in Philippines and Italy and Asia. So. Um, we know that in addition to the 100 D apps that's already deployed on oh. our testnet, there are two, 300 more that is working on also deploying on us. So hopefully, hopefully when we may not launch, we'll have hundreds of D apps from day one, you know, and, and so I always say that, you know, many other projects starts to build the ecosystem yeah. after they may not. We already started from day one. We already built our developer community and our user ecosystem. That's a good idea. Testnet. So when we main that, we will main that with a million users, with a few hundred D apps. So everyone, you know, it's not a cold start. We call it a warm start, you know, and it will be exciting that way.